Hello everyone and welcome to our coverage of the pro stage from EWS Burke. First day of racing here in the USA getting underway. Ruri, great to be back in America. Yeah, first time on the East Coast for the EWS, so debut venue Burke and uh, the pro stage today did not disappoint. Here we go, third place today was Rafaela Richter in the pro women's field. What a stage this is as well, just a great bit of trail. Yeah, nice and dry out in these open piece sections, but that sun hadn't quite got to these woods. Treacherously slippy, and this is the famous coffin section she's going through now. Yeah, you just have to, oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, that thing took me out walking across it earlier on this morning, so fair play to Raffaella making short work of that big slab. Yeah, nice inside line on the exit there, and you can see the bike dancing around. It's just after the speed trap section in these lower woods and the dirt in here was perfect. This section of trail is honestly about as good as it gets. Richter then over the line with a 7.16, third fastest today. Next up it was Bex Barona with a second place. Yeah, now based in the Tweed Valley in Scotland, so she'll be used to these slippy conditions. Absolutely no stranger to danger on the wet routes, Bex Barona heading into them and yeah, you look at the coffin section big rocks big roots yeah. this is typical Vermont at its best isn't it oh, oh trying to get high and picking away across it but keeping it going not clean but it could have been a lot worse through there yeah enduro is about not losing as much time as possible in situations like that and in off the speed trap nice and clean the entrance to that I can't emphasize enough absolutely flat out and you're breaking hard into that left hander yeah these bottom woods so low me in front of ride you can see her just kicking up a big rock there the rider oh. behind her will have thanked her for that one <laughs> Bex down the line 7.14.45 fastest today then Ella Connolly and what a season the young Scott is having yeah returning from that broken elbow only you know six weeks ago now and, you know, to come out on top here today, really good return to form for her. Listen, these EWS racers, a different breed from mere mortals, but... Noticeably faster today noticeably than the rest faster of the girls. there, but this stage just littered with holes and roots. Absolutely perfect through there. That you, you can just come off, stick an arm into, and, you know, that'll be your season done again, but... Yeah, you can see she's just making up time through all these technical sections. Down off the road, back into the woods. Nice and smooth down this bottom section. <laughs> I think if you've ever ridden mountain bikes, even once you know the quality of that dirt, just kicking up behind her, beautiful to see. Yeah, good crowd in this bottom woods. Definitely one of the key sections to watch and see these riders railing through these loamy turns. And there she is, a 708 92, and I think we can hear from her now. Just confirmation then, there are your top 10. Scarzi up in fifth, Ray Morrison in 10th. I just won the pro stage, so I'm really happy with that. It's a good start to the weekend. What was the track like? It kind of, you had like three kind of distinct phases of tracks. At the top it was pretty grassy, rooty, and like the slippiest part of the track. And then it transitioned into a lot of rocks, which had a bit of mud dragged over them, but you could keep it rolling. And then at the bottom there were like some really nice loamy turns that you could just like really push into and hit properly. My confidence has had a big boost after today. I wasn't really sure, I've been pretty tired this week. Like hard to recover from one race to get into the next, but. Yeah, now I'm excited now. i just got to pedal hard. Here we go then. Third fastest time in the pro men's field, Richie Rude. Very much we saw uh, Jesse Melamed taking a home win at EWS Whistler last time out. Richie's got two back-to-back -back home rounds, Ruri, hasn't he? Yeah, it's as close as he's going to get to a home race this one, Rick, and he'll be dying to put on a big performance for the home fans. It was amazing, actually, as soon as Richie got in the start gate today, just all of a sudden there was about 100 people around us. He'll have the, uh, oh, just getting away with that. You can see just the visibility through these trees and all the stuff just hanging in, wanting to clip a pedal, wanting to clip a mech. Yeah, the surface up there treacherously slippy. <laughs> Enter this coffin section, making short work of it. And the rock's moving out his way, probably. Yeah, you absolutely would as well. You see these big ruts forming in these corners as well. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Richie not messing about all the way up to the rider's right hand side there. I think he jumped in a different state to get so high <laughs> on that line. Choosing the right line down this next rock slab and then inside in the bottom, choosing to carry speed out. Here he is, down into that left hander we mentioned, full speed ahead and listen, and you're up to Star Wars speed straight away. Yeah, charging into the bottom woods, that doesn't do it justice how narrow that is. 
Richie, he'll be happy with this, I think. Third fast is obviously not what he's gunning for, but you can see the home fans. He'll have the scent of barbecue in his nostrils there now. On the way down, some famous Vermont barbecue. Just had some, actually. It was good. <laughs> yeah, like you say, Rick, third on this stage. I think it would be he'll be secretly happy with that, or quietly happy with that, should we say. He's not going to win the race today, but he could certainly give himself Look, a tall it, task tomorrow. We've seen that so much this season on these uh, onboard camps from Richie, haven't we? Head down front tyre. Here we are then, Jesse Melamed, the winner last time out at his home race at EWS Whistler. And a man who, I think he said there was a mistake in here somewhere, but he was very content with uh, being right in the mix ahead of tomorrow. Yeah, rocking that yellow plate, our new series leader after Whistler and making amazing work through there. All the way... Yeah, up there as well. I think Rude maybe carried a bit more speed yeah. up and over it. Oh, Jesse nice and tight on that inside though, taking the short route out of that. You can see how much the bike's jumping around down there. We jump on board with Jesse now into this tricky left-hander. Get a nice view of the yellow plate there as he tucks behind the bars, trying to make himself as aerodynamic as possible. Through the Victoria speed trap then, hard on the anchors and straight down. Maybe it wasn't hard on the anchors, I think he just slung that in there. <laughs> Melamed really looking just in the form of his life at the minute, Rory. Really. Yeah, linking these corners together really nice. You can see a few roots coming out, but there's some really good kind of catch berms in there that you can just pile into. There's somebody's shoe. Brilliant. And a tattoo. And he left that in front of the camera. It's a bit unfortunate. Oh, look at that. Just so smooth. Carrying speed one to the other. And out into this tight right before. And there is a bit of a pedal to the line, so yep. Jesse getting the head down and leaving it all between the tapes for a 6.05.46. Back to the start gate now, and it is the return of the champ, Jack Moyer, fastest today on the pro stage for the Canyon Collective. Yeah, I called this the other day. I thought this place would suit him. Hold on, you called it, but we agreed on it, so technically we both called it. <laughs> I called it first. <laughs> Jack, Jack putting those long legs to good use down this fast section, just like glued to the ground. I chatted to him earlier on in the hotel, actually, and he was buzzing off this result. He's been a rider just growing back in the confidence. And Ruri, you do start to wonder now, is he going to be the outside factor that can take points away from Jesse or Richie in the championship fight with results like this? Given today's result, Rick, I think he's one, if not the only guy that could do it. Jack, I mean, he goes sideways when there's perfect grip, so these slippy woods will be nothing out of the ordinary for him. No, absolutely at home. Look at the speed of him down through this section. Hold on tight. Coming down into them, some of these really slippy rock sections now. Making just, short work of that yeah. camber, feet on, just... And that's what Jack does best, is exit speed. Yeah, you look at that though, feet up the whole way, there's no real mistakes, he's just picking his way down there, amazing balance on the bike. You really, that really doesn't do it justice, just how slick those rocks were. I rode down uh, after the race, which was again at the bottom, and it was uh, heart in the mouth stuff. Now, down into the last bit of woods, really, really fast, Jack Moyer going like a train. Yeah, if there's one thing Jack can do, it's turn on a sixpence. For a tall guy, you can certainly spin the bike on a really, really small dammer and just look at the pace he's carrying down here. Yeah, he struggled at the start of the year for bike time and some, you know, some setup stuff, but that canyon looking dialed in now. Yeah, that, oh, that shorter wheelbase oh. as well will be helping on these tight turns. You can see him just cutting inside of that last rut there just to carry some extra speed out. Okay, when traction is limited, Jack Moyer is the man you want on the bike. Down the line then for the fastest time on today's pro stage, a 6.04.48 Moyer into pole position for tomorrow's racing. There are confirmation then, Moyer, Melamed, Rude, Walker right up there as well. Master still, they, those two can't be separated, Luke is second. So. I didn't think I could make time on that one, so <laughs> just try to ride as fast as I can on them all and we'll see. Yeah, the other ways are, I think they were, they were in the same second as me then, so. Just going to have to give it the berries and see how we end up. There we have it then. Plenty more to come tomorrow from EWS Burke, the first of a historic East Coast of the US set of double headers. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel as well as our social media channels to make sure you don't miss any of the action. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.